Well, hello, and welcome to the Digging Deeper podcast. If you don't, uh, if you've never been here before, and you want to know what we're doing, our goal here is to dig a little bit deeper into that week's sermon, so that we might just dig a little bit deeper into our hearts. If you don't know who we are, uh, my name is Chris Brown, and I'm the associate pastor here. My name is Jacob Belling. I'm the men's minister here, and I'm Judah, the guy in the chair. All right, men's minister. That's <laughs> up to six. Is that right? Uh, honestly, that five? I can't even remember what all I've said so far. <laughs> yep. Can you remember? Uh, let's see. Uh, you've got um, connections minister. Yep. Facility manager, director of automotive trans coordination. Uh, like distribution. Distribution. Uh, care minister, outreach minister, and men's minister. Yeah, so that's seven, I guess. All right. Now, y'all might be thinking to yourself, Jacob's making all this up and that he actually doesn't do this stuff. You actually do (laughs) have your hands in uh, everything that you've mentioned so far. And so, what's he going to say next week? I'm starting to run out. (laughs) Yeah. All right. If you weren't here last week, uh, we covered uh, part one of Pastor Lee's uh, Building Friendships uh, little mini-series thing. And and this week is part two of that. But before we get into part two of building friendships, did y'all apply part one? Did y'all go make some friends this week? No. <laughs> no. Jacob didn't. Did you, Judah? Uh, nope. I just stayed in my room all week. <laughs> <laughs> Not even online? Not even no. on Twitch? or No. Yeah, just no friends at all. No friends. Okay. I did well. talk to some people Sunday. Okay. Yeah. Well, okay. That's making Does friends. That count? Yeah, that okay. counts. All right. All right. Yeah. yeah, that's good. Did you? Well, I don't even remember what our practical advice was. I I fell asleep. <laughs> or I, I've, I've slept since then. Uh, but, you just go talk to people. Yeah, but that's basically it's, it. Just go yeah, talk to it. people. It's not that yeah. hard. Yeah. Well, did you go make friends? That's the real question because this is for you and us a that's little right. bit. Um, so let us know in the comments. Also, Judah, you're slipping. What are they supposed to do? Uh, while you're down there, go like and subscribe and comment down below. Yeah, we're edging up to 300 subscribers. Really? Big, big time. That's big crazy. leads. Yeah. <laughs> I think we're at 282 right now, so you could be 283. All right. Anyways, today is, uh, or this week is part two of the um, Building Friendships kind of series. Last week, uh, Pastor Lee dug a bit into building friendships within the church and treating visitors and stuff uh, that come to the church and, and recognizing them, caring for them. This is going to hang out in kind of a similar fashion, but it's going to be a little bit more generalized. Um, so it's not just for church, but you know, wherever you go. Um, I don't know if we asked this question last week. Introvert, extrovert? Um, I do have some introverted tendencies, mm-hmm. but I'm probably more extroverted or if if anything i think naturally i'm more introverted but i i pretend more like i'm an extrovert and i'm happier when i do that okay yeah i could yes okay okay judah 100 percent introverted which is why you stayed in your room all week yes okay cool yeah i am i'm probably with you i'm i'm naturally introverted but i learned in my 20s that um, that life goes better whenever I act extroverted. Yep. <laughs> um, I, I still very much recharge on my own. Uh, but I find that if I completely introvert and, and isolate, then life starts to go downhill pretty quick for mm-hmm. me. And so, so yeah, very much uh, that. So whenever you all go out to the grocery store, wherever you're at, a gas station, blah, blah, blah. Uh, do y'all look for people to talk to? Are y'all like one of the, like, like, you know, like when you run into people and they're just like looking for a conversation mm-hmm. and they're like, hey, how's it going? Hey, yeah, that's some fine cereal you got there. <laughs> uh, are y'all those kinds of people? Uh, I'll mostly focus on the people that like have to talk to you. Mm-hmm. So like the cashier? Yeah, the yeah. cashier, the person running the drive through um, uh, <laughs> so you'll like start a conversation with oh, like, yeah. Hey, how are you doing? And yeah. you're like, you'll actually like, yeah, I actually going. talk with them and it's uh-huh. uh, fun. It drives my wife crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with her. I, I am mission minded, mm-hmm. awkward interaction. Here's thank you for the food. Thank you. Yep. Bye. 
And Chick Fil A says my pleasure. Right. Yeah. Chick Fil A is yeah. easy. Yeah. You know, they do it for you mm-hmm. in a lot of ways. But um, and you know, it also depends like on the day. Like if I'm tired, if I'm worn out, then you know, it's like okay, just kind of roll with it. Mm-hmm. And uh, yes, thank you for my groceries. Goodbye. See you next time. Kind of a thing. But there's actually a really fun thing that I've been doing recently, which is when you uh, order online for food, if you ever do that. Just put under like special recommendations or something. You just put, uh, make it order a salad or make it look like a salad. And so I do this at Chicken Place and they're like, here's your salad. And it's just chicken, but it's really funny. And it starts like they'll say that whenever. (laughs) Yeah. But it's just chicken. Can you put like in the special description? It's like when I show up, please address me as Prince Ali. Can, can you do that? Yeah, you can do whatever you want. It's up to them to really read. Yeah, you should try that. Yeah. Try that this week. Let us know next week okay. what happens. I'll yeah. Do yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, I had a thought. I lost it. Anyways. Yeah, I... Uh, oh, I remember what it was. Uh, we don't eat out as much as I used to when I was single. But whenever I was single, uh, I would eat out enough uh, that I would... Uh, start to interact with the same people Mm -hmm. over and over again. And it's like, I know that I recognize you and I'm pretty sure I come here enough that you recognize me, but we're just going to pretend that we're strangers. Uh Uh, Do y'all do that? Oh yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, Yeah. Anyways, all that has nothing to do with anything other than uh, how we should think as Christians, as we interact with people that we may not know. And that's kind of uh, the the gist of the sermon this week, as we're looking at what the Bible has to say about building friendships. The passage this week is Zacchaeus, which he was a wee little man. And a wee little man was he. Yep, that's exactly what he was. (laughs) Luke 19, 1 through 10. Let's go ahead and just read the whole thing. And that's, you know, where we're going to be camped out on the sermon. So... Jacob, take it away. Let's read it. All right. Sounds good. He entered Jericho and was passing through. That's Jesus. Uh, And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was rich. And he was seeking to see who Jesus was. I hope that that's like a description of me one day. And Chris was <laughs> a dad, and he was a rich. And he was <laughs> rich. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I don't think anyone's describing me that way right it's now. It's like its own sentence, too. I like it. Uh, all right, verse 3. Um, and he was seeking to see who Jesus was, but on account of the crowd, he could not, because he was small in stature. So he ran on ahead and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was about to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down, for I must stay at your house today. So he hurried and came down and received him joyfully. And when they saw it, they all grumbled. He has gone in to be the guest of a man who is a sinner. And Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I will or I restore it fourfold. And Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, since he also is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. All right, lots there that we can talk about. Uh, Pastor Lee uh, really derived two points from here uh, that we'll expand on uh, in terms of how Jesus cared for um, others and strangers and people they didn't know, and how we can do the same. So mm-hmm. the two uh, observations that Lee made is that Jesus looked at Zacchaeus and Jesus spoke to Zacchaeus. That's very simple. If you're ever looking to uh, make friends, it's a pretty simple two-step process. Yeah. Look at them yeah, and talk to them. <laughs> <laughs> That's a surefire way to start a conversation, right? That's right. That's um, right. Unless your frontier internet at Walmart... <laughs> Do not make eye contact. I will not make eye contact. You will try to make eye contact with me as much as you can and talk to me, and I will like zip right on by. Or uh, AT and T at Costco, they mm-hmm. have a little stand. I, I got Mint Mobile, man. Uh, I've got like five more months on my plan, so not interested. Uh, uh, I mm, mm, okay. <laughs> I am it, not. When you do make eye contact, it feels like uh, like you're when you're playing Monopoly. Like, mm-hmm. go straight to jail. Do not pass go. Yeah. Do not collect $200. Or um, or those uh, those indoor malls, the way uh-huh. that they used to be, like with all those little kiosks in the middle. And 
don't make eye contact with them because they will act like Jesus. And they will come talk to you. Uh, man, I, if you are a manager for Walmart or Costco or any of these places, just a little bit of feedback for you from a consumer. I don't appreciate my presence there being turned into a selling tactic um, for external companies. I don't like that. I feel like I'm being turned into a product by the by the uh, by the company itself. It's just not 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 my not my favorite thing. Anyways, right. I actually have a story about mm-hmm. the mall people. Yeah, I try not to go to the mall anyway because mm-hmm. I don't want to. Mm-hmm. Um, but there was one time me and Sam were at Hewlin Mall and we were walking. Uh, she had to go to some store for some reason, so we're there. And uh, we're we're about to leave, right? And so we're downstairs and we're walking past, and one of those vendors that's out in the middle, he's selling um, like soap and shampoo and like skincare kinds of things. And so he stops me and says, "Oh well, uh, tell me about your your routine. You're like, what do you do? Like anyway, I'm like, dude, uh, you know, I don't I don't use any of these kinds of things. I literally just use a bar of soap." Like, that's all I do. And, like, so I'm like, you're just going to waste your time with me. You're going to waste my time. Let's just, like, I hope you have a great day, you know, Mm -hmm. kind of a thing. And the look on his face when I told him that all I used was soap was like. He was horrified. He was like, what? (laughs) It was great. Uh, But, yeah, same thing. It was like, oh, shut that one down pretty quick. Like, it's just not. I don't want your $75. Yeah, I. Randy would say I might be a little bit mean <laughs> or or short. Short might be the better word. I'm I'm not really ever mean, but I'm short with those kinds of salesmen. Um main, uh, mainly cuz like you're coming at me and I don't I don't know if I feel like I owe you anything because you are like being pushy on the sales thing. Um on a side note, I only use a two in one shampoo. Mm-hmm. For everything, yeah, it's like I, I've never understood. Maybe someone can clarify this in the comments. What is the difference between a shampoo and a like a body wash? It's like, is there something wrong if I use the shampoo as a body wash? You've gotten this Judah, far. do you know? <laughs> um, uh, as someone who has a lot of like women around me, yes, there's lots of differences with hair. There's like certain. There's like shorter hair or like the different consistency in hair there's differences with the shampoo so and also if people have like hair damage or dandruff or something there's soap specific to that oh no i totally get that so yeah uh so, so, so i don't know if i would use body wash for shampoo but who's to say i can't use shampoo for body wash yeah exactly um sure you could you could you just all the women that. that are listening. You, yeah, <laughs> you let me know in the comments. Make a case for why I should go buy a separate thing of body wash. We'll leave it there. Jacob, thank you for starting that conversation. You're welcome. All right. You're welcome. <laughs> Jesus looked at Zacchaeus. Jesus spoke to Zacchaeus. Okay. Do you have any thoughts on Jesus looking at Zacchaeus? Well, um, he had to look up. <laughs> so, uh, since Zacchaeus he was up had in the to look. Tree, oh, Jesus yeah. had to look well, up. Well, did Jesus have to? Well, I guess it says he looked up. I was about to say, was Zacchaeus short enough that Jesus, even Zacchaeus climbing up, that he was like eye level? Uh, he did say, it does say he looked it, up. It right? does say he looked okay, up. Yeah. Right. <laughs> no, you're right. Um, I guess look, look, let's preface real quick who Zacchaeus was. So it said that he was a chief tax collector. They didn't like tax collectors back then. Uh, to be fair, we don't like tax collectors now. Uh, but back then, they really didn't like tax collectors because here's what Rome would do. So Rome was in control of uh, the Jewish people, but Rome themselves didn't want to collect the tax or the taxes from them. So they would find a Jewish person who would be willing to basically sell out their nation uh, to be a a middleman mm. to collect those taxes. And Rome would tell Zacchaeus, the the tax collector, "Hey, we want ten percent or or whatever it was." Whatever you collect above that, that's on you, and, and that can be your salary. And so 
he may get greedy, and a lot of them would get greedy because they have Rome behind them, and they would collect 20%, or uh, I don't know what the actual numbers were. I wonder if they're out there. Uh, uh, I don't know. Yeah, I bet yeah, there's some numbers out there. Anyways, uh, so so effectively, they would overtax the people to fill their pockets. Mm-hmm. So it was like a double... Uh, a double hit. It's like one, you're betraying the Jewish people by partnering up with Rome, and two, you're taking advantage of the Jewish people for your own mm-hmm. thing. So, people did not like tax collectors, right? right. Um, yeah. And he was a chief tax collector. He's a chief tax collector. Yeah, you know, I don't know if I've ever picked up on that before. It's like a pyramid scheme. Yeah, <laughs> but tax collectors. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, very. Uh, you know, and I don't like, like you said. I don't know. You know exactly what the the structure was like. That that was the basic Roman to Jewish tax collector structure. Um, but I guess it makes sense that they would communicate with, "Hey, you're the chief tax collector in this area. You're in charge of all the other tax collectors. You're the regional manager yeah. of <laughs> yeah. the tax collectors." You're right. And uh, and if that was the case, if then all the money's flowing to Zacchaeus first, and then from him to the Romans, maybe. Um, mm-hmm. Then you would imagine that. No, this, it, it would totally make sense if he did have guys underneath him be like, okay, I'll take whatever you want. I get 1%, though, of right. whatever you get, and then it just keeps going up. Right. So he uh-huh. would definitely uh, be uh, one of the wealthier tax collectors yeah. than being the chief tax collector there. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. And uh, anyway, so, so that kind of sets rich. the stage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. So that kind of sets the stage as to why it was significant that Jesus even looked at him. Yeah. Uh, Pastor Lee pointed out that um, that likely he was avoided. The looks that he was getting was not the looks that he wanted, probably. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so, but Jesus looked at him not in a disdained kind of way, but in a compassionate way. That's right. right. Uh, what can we learn from that? Um, I think really the rest of the story uh, is very, very telling, right? Mm-hmm. Especially... You know, Zacchaeus repents, um, and he doesn't just repent and say, oh, yes, uh, I'm going to turn away from my uh, uh, the, these evil things that I've been doing, but uh, he puts his literal money where his mouth is. Mm-hmm. Right? Hey, I'm going to give away half my possessions to the poor, which, again, it really speaks to how wealthy, mm-hmm. how much wealth that he's accumulated and accrued. Which, let's just sit on that for just yeah. a second, because you might say, okay, he's rich. Like, let's say he had equivalent of like $20 million. Um, and you're like, I'm going to give away half to the poor. Uh, it's like, oh, well, that's so easy if you got $20 million. Probably not. Right. Like imagine like a, like likely a lot of y'all have some sort of retirement. Imagine going into your retirement and just taking half of it and just selling it. You might have a couple million in your retirement, but are you still willing to go take out a million of that and... It's like, you might say yes, and you know, more power to you. But I think a lot of us would have like a little twinge in our system. Oh, be yeah. like, oh, I don't know about that. Right. Right. Yeah. And so half, and, you know, if let's say you have 20 million and, uh, well, if you give away half, you still have 10 million. Mm-hmm. Right? But then he goes further and says, if, if I've defrauded anyone of anything, I restore it fourfold. Right. So that's that's going to be well over half. Yeah. So now he's he's basically cashing out Yeah. Uh, his entire Savings, yeah, right. That, yeah. That's right, and uh, I think the it's this last these last two verses really are the the big point, right? Jesus said to him, "Today salvation has come to this house, since he's also since he also is a son of Abraham, for the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost." It's like Zacchaeus was lost, mm-hmm. right? And Jesus literally sought him out, mm-hmm. right? He's he's there, and he didn't just. You know, oh, I could talk to Zacchaeus and, you know, whatever. Like, he deliberately chose Zacchaeus, Mm -hmm. right? He looked up and said, hey, yeah, uh, come here. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Uh, Let's go to your house, dude. Right. Kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, So so here's a question that I have. Uh, So so getting into the, the aspect of Jesus, while other people are very unkind to this man, Jesus sought to be kind to him, both in words, in actions, and in just interactions. Mm-hmm. Uh, Pastor Lee mentioned going to Walmart like we did last week, uh, and how it's not always on our, you know, the front of our brain to to interact with mm-hmm. others. So here's the question: 
Should Christians care about what our face and what our body language communicates to others? Yes. Why? Um, well, I think <laughs> it's like uh, if, if, if particularly when when somebody, whether they know that you're a Christian or not, right? Our our faces, our body language says a lot about us. Like, are we are we Christians? We've been saved. You know, by uh, grace through faith in Christ. Um, how do we feel about that? Like, is there a joy that mm-hmm. we have in our lives because of that, or are we like, you know, like, hey, we're just, I'm just trying to get in Walmart face. and get yeah. out, and like, you know, then there's no joy. Mm-hmm. Right? Um, so, so let's uh, let me push it a little bit further. Let's say that my face just naturally does not communicate joy. I may have all the joy in the world, but like my face just doesn't communicate that. Should I care to try to change that? Um, I think it's a, well, facial uh, cues are a form of communication. Mm -hmm. And so short answer is yes. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I mean, it's, you know, it's not something that's easy and you want it to be natural. Mm -hmm. So it's not like, we want to walk around Walmart just going. Judah, what what, what was that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just walk, just Have y'all seen up. that meme? It's a guy. I don't even remember what the meme was about, but the guy, he has two paper clips attached to a rubber band. He's got the rubber band behind his head. He's got the paper clips mm-hmm. giving himself a smile. Mm-hmm. It's like, yeah, we don't want to look like that. Yeah. So, so the reason I ask is because I think sometimes people use that as a crutch, right? It's like... It's like, oh, well, you just don't seem happy. Well, it's like, I am happy. It's just the way my face looks. That's just my face. <laughs> and um, yeah. I think, like, body language is important, and I think Christians should care enough to not be fake, but to help communicate better what's actually going on inside. Mm-hmm. And so, um, uh, I, I think about this a lot, actually, in terms of, like, how I communicate on stage is, like, not only the words that I'm saying, are, are they what I want to say, but is my body language and the way that I say it communicating that as well? Um, because at the end of the day, it's a full package, right? right. Um, it's, it's like, it's not just about your words, but it's about your body language and what you're, you're doing that. That communicates just as much as your words do. And so, I think that's really important for Christians that if you've got, if you just naturally have a somber face, it might be worthwhile to think think and start to retrain your muscles to communicate joy, right? Yeah. Because uh, if you walk past 100 people in Walmart, you likely will only talk to one or two of them. But the other 98 are going to still receive communication from you about your life. And if, if, if the two that you actually talk to, they're like, oh, yeah, that's a great person. They're full of joy. But the other 98 are like, that person hates life. Yeah. That's a problem, mm-hmm. right? And so, so I, I do think in, in tying into the, you know, Jesus looked at Zacchaeus, um, I, think, I think our body language and nonverbal communication, um, I don't know if it's just as important as our verbal communication, mm-hmm. uh, but it's, it's important. It's up there. It's up there. It's like, <clears throat> I mean, it doesn't tell us uh, in verse 5, you know, when Jesus came to that place, he looked up and then started talking to Zacchaeus. And like the way that the even the way that you, um, you know, the way that you speak these words that come next, like make a difference. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. It's like, did he look up and what was he like? I'm <laughs> staying at your house, tonight. right? <laughs> exactly. Zacchaeus, hurry, come down, for I must stay at your house today. Mm-hmm. It's like now it sounds like it's an obligation. Right? Yeah. Oh, I must do this, or like so, Zacchaeus, Zacchaeus, come down. You got an, you got an Airbnb. I'd, I'd like to run out tonight. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like those, that, that makes a difference. Yeah. Big yeah. time. It's uh, it's kind of like text messaging, right? Mm-hmm. You can, and that's the problem with nonverbal communication is you can read, you can read a text message and the meaning behind what the sender wants to mm-hmm. say is completely lost because like when you read it, you misinterpret yeah. it in the tone. And Dude, that's why I'm not a huge over emoji user, yeah. but I like emojis for that sense that it helps communicate tone. Right. Uh, because how we've all probably been there. We get into a text conversation and something gets misconstrued mm-hmm. and now someone's upset with someone about that. 
Yeah, hundred percent. You've been there, Gen- okay. Just making sure you've been there. Huh? <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know if Gen Z has these same problems as we do. Yeah, and what I don't like about conversations in text is people say "lol" at the end of stuff, <laughs> even when they it's not even supposed to be funny. They're just responding and then just say "lol." So. Okay, so I, I I don't do "lol." I do "haha." Um, <laughs> and I do it. Uh, so so we're so you grew up in emoji world. Yes, we grew up. We, we without have emojis colon capital D yeah and so <laughs> so nowadays emojis are like the mood yeah. how, how you set the tone to the thing but before that um, you had to find other ways to do it so you might you do the you know colon princes um, and I for the longest time used haha as it um, and it's like it's like I'm not necessarily telling a joke but I want I want to be communicated that what I'm saying is supposed to be taken lighthearted. Yep. Uh, and I, I do LOL. Yeah. That's what I do. Yep. <laughs> I kind of grew. It's so overused yeah. that I don't like it. <laughs> I kind of grew. Uh, so we grew up in the T9 world. Uh, mm-hmm. Do you know what T9 is? Nope. Oh. Uh, oh so, you're about to learn. Here we yeah. go. <laughs> so like in the old phones where like you just had the numbers on it. It's like you're flip right. phones. Right. Um, so T9 was. Uh, okay. So. Uh, let's go further back. So you had those n- numbers, and each number had like four letters to it, right? And so if I wanted to type hi, I would have to go to four, hit four twice to be an H, and then what is it? Um, is it? Is four. Is it four again. Uh-huh. Yeah, and then hit four three times to do an I, right? Um, so T9 creates a shorthand. And so I can just hit four twice, and it's like, we think that you're trying to say hi. It predicts it for yeah, you. It predi- yeah, it's Autocorrect. A, yeah, it's like it's predictive text yeah. um, for the old school way. Uh, so so as you can imagine, it's a very cumbersome way to do it. It's not a full keyboard. And so everyone started to use these shorthands. So like LOL, like laugh out loud, or um, where are, are you, you. Um, or, um, you know, where are you going to, like mm-hmm. the actual number. And I hated that. <laughs> it drove me up a wall <laughs> when I would see that. And it created a world of people who don't know how to use grammar. Yep. And your generation, by the way, is worse. Guilty. <laughs> is worse. Not because y'all do the shorthand, but because y'all don't use punctuation nope. at all. There's zero yep. punctuation in y'all's messages. And I have to just sit there and decipher what are you trying to say? Because there's no periods. There's no commas. There's no capitalization. It's just... It's just a blurb of mess. Yeah. yeah. Did you have to deal with that in a, when you taught and you have to grade essays? Um, yeah, to an extent. Um, but I mean, honestly, when whenever it was more formal, they did a pretty decent job. It was mm-hmm. like the less formal uh, sorts of things where, like, and every once in a while, I'd get I'd get one that was like all in Gen Z gibberish <laughs> shorthand. <laughs> not not like the not a lot of like the words and phrases like the Gen Z Bible that we did mm-hmm. uh, for the Bad yep. Doctrine a couple weeks ago. Not so much of that, but just that shorthand kinds of stuff. It's yeah. like this is we're at school. Like it's okay to do that with your friends, but. I'm first off, you have to consider your audience, right? Mm-hmm. I am not Gen Z. And so mm-hmm. you have to communicate with me in a way that I can understand you. Yeah. And there's just etiquette. There's yeah. etiquette. So, so uh, I'll concede text for the most part is a more informal mm-hmm. etiquette. Uh, I still think proper grammar should be used for the most part, uh, at least enough to like communicate what you want to say. Um, email, though, I think should be. Not super formal, but like more business yeah. etiquette. Uh, even if it's just you know messaging someone, I I yeah okay. Do you have a defense for why Gen Z doesn't use punctuation? Uh, mm, sorry. <laughs> Do you use punctuation? <laughs> uh, I'd say yes when I need to, because if I'm texting with texting with friends, like. I'll use all the shortcuts that I'll use because, I mean, they do it. And so, Mm -hmm. you know, we're getting the point across anyways. But, like, if I'm texting my mom or something, Mm -hmm. yeah, I'll use proper. (laughs) She's your teacher. Yeah. (laughs) She's going to dock your grade. I guess you're graduating now, but. 
text to speech uh, does the grammar for you, or speech speech to text. So if you just talk into it, it'll add the punctuating mark. I do appreciate so on iPhone uh, if someone does speech to text, it, it'll tell you yeah uh, on there. So it's like if it sounds weird, it's like oh okay yeah they did. Uh, good good guy Apple letting us know. Yep, they were being um, lazy. They wouldn't text me. They just talked to yeah, me right. instead. <laughs> um, <laughs> Okay, here's a... Oh gosh, communication I, matters. Communication right? the way we communicate matters. matters. Here's a good example, though, um, <laughs> on how communication can get misconstrued in text. Uh, so I remember I was picking up a student one time, and, uh, and I was at his house, and I just texted him. I said, here, period. And he got in the car, and he's like, why are you so mad? And I'm like, what are you talking about, mad? He's like, he's like you just sent me here, period. I was like... It's like, yeah, it's just using a period. It's like, no, when you put a period, that means like short, like like you're being short with a person. I'm like, like I'm just using grammar, man. <laughs> um, a good example on how texting doesn't communicate, uh, always communicate mood and tone and stuff like that. But then pulling it back, full circle, pulling it back yep. to our body language uh, and not just the words that we say, but is our body language and our tone communicating what we want to communicate as well. And if it's not, I think it's something that we should think about. You should have put here, haha. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I should have. <laughs> Anything uh-huh. else? Uh-huh. I'm here. <laughs> Anything else to add on the on the look body language side of things? Um, no, I think it was, we pretty well covered it. All right, let's move to our words. No. Um, so the second thing that Pastor Lee pointed out, uh, so the first one is that Jesus looked at Zacchaeus. The second one is Jesus spoke to Zacchaeus. Um, and what did the words that he say, I guess what, let's create a world where we have multiple options of what Jesus could have said to Zacchaeus. What, what are some of those options? Hmm. Well, it, I think it's kind of tough because, like, clearly we, we don't have the full conversation mm-hmm. here. Um, but um, I guess the, the I'm sorry when when uh, I mean the the initial the, oh, okay. the initial word. So so the initial thing they said yeah, was verse five in verse five. Zacchaeus, hurry up and come down because today is necessary for me to stay at your house. Um, so like, let's play a game of the Pharisees. What would the Pharisees have said to him? Uh, Zacchaeus, why are you up in the tree? Go back to your tax booth. Nobody wants you here. Mm-hmm. Okay. Is that um, what you're thinking? Yeah, 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 sure, sure. Um, what about overly politically correct, inclusive, you live your life, you live your truth? What would they have said? If you want to climb trees, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> you do you, man. Yeah, that's you right. you want to be a monkey? You be a monkey. <laughs> <laughs> that's his self identification. <laughs> uh-huh. Oh gosh. Yeah. I, okay. I, I guess what I'm getting at here is, um, uh, I think what some people would have wanted Jesus to do is to have words of condemnation uh, for for Zacchaeus. And while other people uh, would have had, wanted to have words of like over inclusive inclusivity mm-hmm. uh, and acceptance of it, here we actually see, and again we, we don't have the full context, and this is probably what you were getting at, is we actually have a little bit of both here mm-hmm. in that. So the initial statement was a uh, Zacchaeus, I want to spend time with you, and it, it's almost like a no matter what you've done. Like, like, I'm going to yeah. spend time with you today. But then the end result of him being with them is him repenting of everything they did. So, mm-hmm. which begs the question, was there a conversation in between that that we don't know about um, in which, like, the gospel uh, was kind of presented of, like, come follow me, uh, similar to to that of the rich young ruler mm-hmm. where the conversation was like, like, yeah, you can come follow me, but here's what you need to do. You need to get rid of all this stuff. I wonder if a similar conversation happened with Zacchaeus that we aren't privy to. Um, what do you think? Uh, yeah, I think there there would have had to have been a conversation. I mean, and if he's going to go over to his house and um, let's say that they're going to, because I mean, and that was a big thing for them too, uh, was hospitality. Mm-hmm. Right for us, um, yeah, yeah, hospitality matters, but not near on that same level that they had in the first century in uh, Judea. 
um, that was something that was expected, right? Mm-hmm. It was, um, you know, when somebody's uh, there, uh, a traveler from wherever, like you invite them into your house, you feed them, like you, you're socializing, you're talking. And so I think, uh, I don't think it's, uh, it'd be getting too far ahead of ourselves to say like, that's what was going on a little mm-hmm. bit. And the fact So that, it would have been almost a Jesus giving him honor yeah. to, to allow him to come over Correct. and be hosted. Correct, because he could have picked probably just about anybody to mm-hmm. go to their house and, uh, and eat with and hang out with, spend some time with, and he chose Zacchaeus of all people mm-hmm. to do that with. And so I think uh, I think that's a level. Well, yeah, I guess that makes sense because Jesus was homeless, <laughs> and so whenever he went to a, hound, a town, someone had to host him. Mm-hmm. You know, it's probably similar to like a, if a missionary was to come back from you know the Philippines or whatever, um, they don't have a home here, and so uh, he would have a host family while he's here. Mm-hmm. And and so Jesus comes to this town. It's like, oh, who's going to host him? Like, who who is who's who, going who to get the to, honor yeah, to yeah. be able to host Jesus? Mm-hmm. And Jesus is like you, yeah. Yeah, interesting. The okay. chief tax collector. The chief tax collector. Yeah. Now, I'm gonna play devil's advocate here. Did Jesus do that because he knew he probably had a really nice home <laughs> and like a jacuzzi? <laughs> He's like, you know, whose house I really want to go to. <laughs> yeah. We've been on the road for a while now, and <laughs> he's got some nice beds. Uh, <laughs> He's got a pool, a washing machine. You know, <laughs> Jesus came to seek and to save the lost. And if that includes a jacuzzi, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm joking, guys. <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Don't label me a heretic in the comments. <laughs> right. So, yeah, I, no, I, so, yeah, I do think uh, there's definitely more that happened than, than what, we, what we see here in Luke 19. But... Uh, Luke 19 is really all we need. Like the the results speak for themselves, mm-hmm. right? And and Jesus didn't go and say, "Hey, uh, you yeah, mean Luke let, nine. Oh, oh, 19. sorry, Luke, Luke 19. Yeah, as in the chapter. Gotcha. Correct, correct. Yeah. Uh, Jesus didn't say, "Hey, um, I hear that you know you are the chief tax collector. Uh, let's go, uh, let's go hang out at your tax booth, and uh, I'll help you out." So mm-hmm. you know, he didn't say that. He's like, "Hey, let's go to your house," and the end result is, you know, Jesus is uh, is you know, spending time with him, and the result is repentance mm-hmm. there. Yeah, which which gives like a good a good path to mimic for us Christians. Because like, the, you know, the question is, I think we even discuss this question when it comes to like the LGBTQ, like yeah. what, how, how would you handle that in the wild, mm-hmm. right? It's like, well, I'm not just going to go out and just like ruin someone's day. Right. Like if I see, you know, if the cashier clearly is like part of the LGBTQ, I'm not going to sit there and like chastise them, right? right? right. And we see Jesus didn't do that either, right? right? Like Jesus started with relationship mm-hmm. and just getting to know the person and then it moved into repentance, yeah. right? And so it's like it's that grace and truth mm-hmm. that's always balanced. And so if you're going to take a, a pure grace approach, then there's no call to repentance. Right. If you're going to take a pure, uh, a true, uh, tr- a pure truth approach, uh, then it's just pure condemnation, right? Right. And so it's that that the, the two are hanging in tandem with each other. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it would be worth noting that in the text, it says Zacchaeus saw that Jesus Jesus was coming his way. He couldn't see through the crowd, so he had to go up the tree. He was actually wanting to see Jesus. Mm-hmm. So uh, then Jesus like pointed him out and, and called him. There was an element of he was seeking yeah. out Jesus as well. He's yep. seeking. Yep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's true. Seeking you shall find. That's right. Um, and And even... Uh, let's say that he didn't do that. Let's just say, for the sake of argument, that he was sitting in his tax booth. Uh, well, that's how Matthew's called, yes, Matthew. right? Yeah. Uh, he's he wasn't even necessarily seeking that mm-hmm. that we know of. Anyway, he's just hanging out in his tax booth, right? And Jesus I don't know. calls him. The chosen says different. No, I'm just kidding. Actually, <laughs> the, I don't think the chosen. Oh, no, they, they no, no, they do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They had uh, Matthew and the chosen Matthew was kind of like curious uh-huh. about Jesus. Yeah, 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 he was. Yeah, uh, and I don't know that we know uh, no, that much about. Uh, yeah, uh, I don't uh, think it gives any indication one way or the other. Right. Uh, uh, but now when he calls him, he's in his tax booth, mm-hmm. and so. Um, but it's probably helpful that Zacchaeus was uh, interested, at the very least, and you know he. Uh, what does he say? Uh, he was seeking to see who Jesus was back in verse 3. It's like, okay, 
who is this guy that everybody's talking about, mm-hmm. right? And so he goes out and climbs up the tree, and now yeah. we sing songs about and, it. And know? how Jesus responded to that mm-hmm. probably would have taken it a number of different ways. So if he's in this kind of like, for like a better word, seeker mindset of like, I don't know who Jesus is, but but I want to figure it out. Um, if Jesus would have just passed him by, he would have been like, okay, cool. Uh, or if Jesus would have like condemned him, he would have been like, Okay, well, he's just like everyone else. Mm-hmm. I'm just going to go back to my thing. And so, uh, so, so again, yeah, I think that's a good reminder for us that for those that are outside the church, they're looking to the church for a glimpse of who Jesus is. Mm-hmm. And how we respond to that is really important. Mm-hmm. Again, it's it's got to be that grace and truth thing. It, it can't be you know, uh, pure grace and inclusivity because then – you know, Jesus is just a hippie, right? And, yeah. and you know, let's all just get along. Um, there's no actual, like, he is God and has made a path for us to God. Um, if it's just pure truth, then it's like, okay, well, Jesus is just a condemning bigot, mm-hmm. right? Um, and so, yeah, how we respond is important. Yep, absolutely. Uh, what else I... Any other thoughts on that one? I liked uh, Pastor talked about greeting cards. Okay, I had that here. I, uh, for I special know occasions. Get into that. <laughs> do you like giving cards? Uh, I do. Mm-hmm. Um, my wife does not. I hate <laughs> it. Do you like giving cards? What, like up front? Uh, so, like, uh, like for Christmas or for birthdays. Oh. Um, uh, no, I don't do that. You, you just don't do it. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'll uh, usually I'll spend a lot of time. At, at the greeting card aisle whenever it's because uh, you know sometimes you find one that's really good but you got to wade through an awful lot of ones that are just not it's mm-hmm. like that card's lame like next I'm just so lame. utilitarian that mm-hmm. and green cards are expensive man it's like five bucks yep. for for a, a decent one and if let's say I'm giving the person twenty dollars or twenty dollar gift card and it's inside the card Man, I would rather just give you twenty five dollars and no card. <laughs> so, so that way, because like, because let's be real, what's going to happen to that card? Throw. It's going to go in the trash. Yeah. And so it's like we just threw away five dollars for me to tell you, hey, this is from me. Yeah. Right. Yeah. At least that's how it works in my mind. Yeah. G- give yeah. me your best argument uh, for why I shouldn't think that way. You know, honestly, I so um, yeah, I don't know why greeting cards is uh, is a thing that I like doing. Um, maybe growing up, it was, you know, lots of exchanging of, of greeting cards for all sorts of different things. Um, but, uh, I don't know about you whenever, you know, you can tell when somebody like pastor talked about, right? Mm-hmm. Sunday, you can tell when somebody really put a lot of thought into a greeting I card. I don't put any thought in my greeting card. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, I'll just sign my name. <laughs> yeah. It takes, I mean, it takes, uh, um, you know, it takes a special, something special to have happened for that. Usually, right? Mm-hmm. And so, uh, like, if I'm going to write, like, a thank you card or a, a greeting card, and it's going to be more than just, hey, I hope you have a happy birthday, you know, here's all of our names kind of a thing, um, right? It's something significant or something special, right? So I know, um, like, there's been times when, you know, you know I've gotten cards from people, uh, even here, and it was like, man, it it just makes you feel appreciated or whatever it is. So I want to point this out. Judah, you might be in the same boat as me here. I've never gotten a card from Jacob. <laughs> Have you true. ever gotten a card? No. Well, next time, invite me to your birthday party next time. <laughs> yeah. Maybe I'll bring you a card. Mine's next week. So. Is your birthday next week? Yeah, is it? 18th. 18th. What I day? guess the week after. It's Monday. Monday? Like after spring break. Yeah, how old are you going to be? 22. 22. Man. 22. And sober. <laughs> cool. <laughs> you just had to throw that in. Are you 22 years sober, Judah. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> the story behind that is I'm going to a Top Golf, um, like oh, thing. they have like a bar oh, there, and yeah, and there was like special accommodations, and I said celebrating my 22 years sober. <laughs> I think it's funny. It's a good one. You really take advantage of the, the conversation. A- 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 anything we can do for you, or like any oh, other yeah. suggestions, or. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Any other comments? Um, okay, well, fun. Well, if you want to celebrate Judah's 22 years being sober, just let me know in the comments. Uh, 
I'm sorry. What were we talking about? Cards. 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 Yes. Okay. Cards. I agree. I've I've gotten cards or messages before that were very impactful. I just don't like giving cards. <laughs> <laughs> I'm definitely not as good at, at giving them. So cards mix two of my worst traits. Mm-hmm. One is I don't I'm cheap and I don't like to spend money. And two is I'm introverted and don't like words of affirmation. Uh, and cards mix both of those together. <laughs> well, you know, yeah. just thinking about it, now we have AI. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, just have AI write, write your greeting card. Randy would be so offended <laughs> yeah. if I did that. Exactly. Um, it's like it would, She would probably read it, and she would probably be like, oh, my gosh, thank you so much. Huh. And then I say, AI wrote it. <laughs> yeah. And she would just <laughs> instantly get furious. Or she'd read it and be like, you didn't write this. <laughs> 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 Anyways, uh, are you a card person? You let us know. Maybe you want to write some nice words to us in the <laughs> in, in the comment section. It's basically like a greeting card. Basically. But it saves money. All right, we need to wrap this up so we can get into our bad doctor of the week. Uh, practical application. So there's already practical application. Look at people and talk to people. Again, those are the two ways to make friends. Here's some more practical application from, that Lee gave us. Take the initiative. Don't wait on people to come talk to you. You go talk to people. Because here's the thing. If you think in your mind, oh, I'm going to wait for someone else to take the initiative, I promise you they're having that same thought in mm-hmm. their mind. And so it just becomes a game of chicken and stalemate. Yeah. Uh, so take the initiative. We talked about it last week. It's it's awkward. It's awkward for us. It's fine. No one's ever died from, That's right. from going and starting a conversation. And then two, pray for them. Uh, there's obviously the spiritual spiritual element of, you know, pray for the people that you meet, pray for the friends that you have, uh, pray for the interactions that you're going to have. Mm-hmm. All that comes into play as well. All right. Well, we need to go ahead and move into our Bad Doctor of the Week. But just to recap, um, that's the second and final conclusion, uh, concluding sermon of the Building Friendship little mini series. Mm -hmm. How can you make friends? Just look and talk. Boom. Boom. All right. Yeah. We are all now full of friends. (laughs) Okay. With that being said, we are now going to move into our Bad Doctor of the Week. It's the Bad Doctor of the Week. All right, bad doctrine of the week. I asked Jacob before we got on. I said, Jacob, do you want serious, sad, or cringy? And he said, dealer's choice. Mm-hmm. So I have cringy for you today. <laughs> oh, no. Let me just um, set the stage for what we're about to watch um, because it's it's not super clear until you get into the video what's going on. Uh, we are on a plane. Uh, don't you hate it when awkward situations happen on a plane? You can't do anything. You can't do anything. <laughs> Where you're you in go. the air. By the way, I don't think he watches this, but we have a guy who goes to the church that is a flight operator. So he like is in the the control booth, not not in the plane, but like on the ground, and he communicates with the planes. Mm-hmm. And he helps redirect planes and and give them clearing uh, clear to land. He says a lot of times they will have to emergency land planes because people will become disruptive on the plane and uh, and they have to land so they can be arrested by the authorities and detained. It's, it's not going to be to that extent that okay. we're going to see today, but this person's Close. causing a disturbance. Yeah. Um, I hate those videos too mm-hmm. where the, uh, you know, the flight attendants there or they have the police there like on the runway. And, mm-hmm. Oh yeah. And they're yeah. like, uh, yeah, the plane's not taking off till you're off of it, and mm-hmm. they try to like reason and negotiate, yeah. and it's like, dude, just get off the plane. Yeah. Like this is painful. Yes, and so this one here's the situation. Uh, it's a Christian singer. I don't, I don't know her name off the top of my head. Bobby something. Just to learn that she uh, was nominated for a Grammy and wants to share it with the whole plane that she has been nominated for a Grammy and wants to sing the song for them. And the flight director uh, is coming over and it's like, yeah, hey, you're causing a disturbance. You need to sit down. And she starts to go back and forth with this guy. That's, that's the setting the stage. Oh, let's, no. let's go ahead and watch the video. Oh, no. <laughs> Off. The seatbelt signs off. The seatbelt signs off. Okay. 
seatbelt belt signs off. It's not a disturbance. Once you, once right you hit. Here. It's right here, babe. Okay, have a seat. I am. Okay. I'm gonna have a seat. Okay, so watch me bless him. So I used to sing on planes a long time ago. I just found out. She's in the scrubble. I'm up for two Grammys. My very first time, you guys. My name is Bobby Storm. And I'm up for two Grammys. I sing for the Lord. And my song is out on all platforms. It's called We Can't Forget Them. Michael McDonald cleared it. Warren G is on the original record as well. It's with Regulators. I want to share this with you guys. I wanted to do it when I first got on the plane. But I was like, you know, I, I haven't done this in a while. I've gotten to the next status, so. Are you able to be quiet? But they're enjoying it. So while we're sitting here, could I please? I'm not enjoying it. So I'm asking you, can you be quiet? Okay, well, that's I find yes, that up. That's a yes or no answer, please. Am I going to go to jail if I don't? Can you please answer my question? Are you willing and able to be quiet right now? I'm doing what the Lord is telling me to do. I'm asking you a question, yes or no. I'm your flight leader. I need you to follow my instruction. Okay. My instruction for you to answer my question. Are you able to be quiet What right do you now? guys think? <laughs> I'm asking you, ma'am. I'm asking you guys. What do you guys okay. think? Okay. If you're not able to, be, to follow my instruction, yeah. you will not be taking this flight. Ah, uh, okay. Are so you able to be asking. quiet? If that's the case, then that's fine. If you were the so person that's in yes? charge of it all. I'm your flight leader, yes. If you're the person in charge okay. of it all, then that's okay. fine. Okay, all right. Thank all right. you. So I'll sing it on the low for y'all in the back, if that's okay. All right. So the song is called We Can't Forget Them. All right. And you can download it. I don't know the, the issue. No one else has ever had an issue, but it's... Father, Thank you for each day in my life, I realize I don't need anything, I need you by my side, shining your light, I follow, oh Lord. Alright, that, that goes on for another couple minutes. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> All right, opening thoughts. No. <laughs> Just uh there's so much. Uh, so at the very beginning of the video, like she's up in the aisle. Does, what does she want? A microphone? Like uh no, no, she, I think she's just going up and down the the aisles like talking to everyone. Announcing uh, yeah. the, her Grammy okay. nomination. Gotcha. Uh, um, yeah, and so like right there at the very beginning, and the flight leader tells her like, "Hey, you need to go like back to your seat, kind of thing." And she's like, "Well, the, the seatbelt sign's not on. I can walk around, you know, and finding holes and things mm -hmm. like that." It's mm -hmm. like this guy's not playing. Yeah. Um, oh, there's there's a lot. There's a lot that mm -hmm. just happened in that video. So let, let me, uh, yeah, because we we can go a few different oh, ways yeah. with this one. Uh, let's. Let's go to the point where he's like, like I'm telling you to sit down. I'm telling you to be quiet, not, not cause disturbance. And she says, I'm doing what the Lord's telling me to do. Yeah, I was hoping you'd pick that yeah, one. Yeah, what, uh, what, what's your thought on that? It's always... It's like, is he really? <laughs> is he really telling you mm -hmm. to stand up and sing to the you plane know, pl right now? Playing the God told me card. Yeah, yeah. right? It's like that can be used and misused so much. And it's like, okay, clearly the guy who's the flight leader is the guy who's in authority mm -hmm. has told you to sit down. Mm -hmm. um, and it's like, you know, you're, she was causing a scene mm -hmm. for sure. And, man, um, it's like, did God really tell you to do that? Yeah, it's so easy to say, I'm doing what God told me to do, which, by the way, is a great line for uh, teenage guys to use with girls. Right? Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah, like, that's right. hey, God told me that we need to be together. Right? That's right. It's like weird. God didn't tell me that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And so th there's a danger. Here, here's where we're going to get a little bit into the bad doctrine. There's mm -hmm. a danger in the God told me mm -hmm. to do this uh, thing, especially when it doesn't come from Scripture, right? Because then it becomes subjective, mm -hmm. right? It's based on like, okay, did God tell you or is this your thoughts, right? Mm -hmm. And so... So, uh, I don't know. Yeah. If I had a guess, <clears throat> I would say it was less that God told her to sing a song to everybody on the plane. Uh, it was more about her Grammy nominations. <laughs> yeah. And, I mean, you can look read her body language when she sits back down and we can hear more of the conversation. And 
Um, I mean, as soon as she's like, I just, you know, I was nominated for two Grammy nominations. and Everyone look at me. Yeah. Look at me. Yes. There was (laughs) definitely a lot of that. Uh, going on, mm-hmm. just just looking at her body language mm-hmm. and uh, body language. We just talked about this, guys. Body language, tone. What does her body language and tone communicate in this conversation? That's right. Yeah, that's right. And defiance. You know, oh, and she had been thinking about it too. She said, yeah, she that. said "Like <laughs> I was thinking about doing this before the plane took off, but then I decided not to. And it's been a while since I've done this. So yeah. she, it, yeah, she said she used to do this all the time. Right." She's it's like a serial, a, a serial plane singer. It's like, this is where it's like, if you're like, just pretend you're on the plane for a minute. Like, <laughs> I'm so happy that I have my AirPod pros with noise <laughs> yeah. canceling action. It's like, yeah. like she, she sings great. I don't want to hear her sing her song. <laughs> yeah. It's like, I'm, I'm just trying. It's like, it's like the frontier people at Walmart. I'm just trying to buy some fruit, man. Right. I'm not looking to change my internet plan. Yeah. Yeah. And, I, and I don't think it would have been any big deal because, like, I've talked to people uh, on planes before. Like, I've, uh, I don't fly by myself often, but there's uh, one time in particular I can think of that uh, I was sitting in the window seat and there was this couple that was sitting next to me. And, like, we talked for like an hour. Like, mm-hmm. it was a su- they were super nice, sweet people. Um, they were Aggies, so that was like a strike one against them. But uh, but you oh. loved them as God loves. <laughs> oh, absolutely! You saw no. the value in their life. Oh, I'm being and, funny, yeah. but uh, <laughs> no, they they're, they were great people, and it was fun just to talk, right? Um, and I mean, it was a long. It wasn't that long of a flight, but it could have been, right? If I'm just there trying to stay in my, you know, against mm-hmm. the window, basically, and. Um, and so maybe that's what she should have done is instead of stand up and announce to the entire plane, mm-hmm. look at me, mm-hmm. right? uh, I've been nominated for Grammys. Like, okay, mm-hmm. great. It's like, cool. Like, Can you sit down? Right. <laughs> like, no one cares. Yeah. Um, you know, tell the person saying, hey, I'm, oh my gosh, I just got this news. This is amazing. And oh, all right, great. Mm-hmm. I'm happy for you. What's your name? And maybe I'll look it up later. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, that could have gone a lot different. Yeah. It, it didn't. She didn't need to have a platform for yeah. that, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like being excited, I get it too. Mm-hmm. But <laughs> someone's running upstairs. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, well, like what's appropriate and right. Thing, so. Yeah, what's yeah. appropriate and you know, the defiance aspect is like where it really hurts me on mm-hmm. the on the Christian side. Um, you know, well, so the Bible does say obey your governing authorities, obviously. To the extent that they don't cause you to to go against you know your religious beliefs, mm-hmm. um, is this a governing authority? At the very least, like when you enter onto that plane, you are you are agreeing to the terms that they set, mm-hmm. right? Like um, th- there is a go- law, of government re- regulation on planes that that might prevent someone from doing this, um, but at the very least, there's their own internal governing regulations that they're like, hey, if you're going to enter this plane, this is how you're going to conduct yourself. Mm -hmm. Uh, And the same, this is the same uh, argument that I had in COVID with all the masks. I didn't like the mask. I didn't love the mask. But uh, I'm not going to walk into Walmart and then yell at an employee because they're trying to make me wear a mask. Right. right? It's like they're they're a private company. They can do whatever they want. And if I don't like it, I can go somewhere else. Right. And I can just vote with my feet. Uh, and so, so I I don't love uh, when Christians try to go uh, defy other people's um, terms of service, if you will, right. that they've set up. Um, yeah. yeah, agreed. And uh, or if at the very least, if you're going to do it, like do it in like a kind way. Mm-hmm. Like, like clearly, she was being. Um, uh, insubordinate uh, yeah, to right. to the guy's request, to the flight director's request, and and she could have made a case. I think she could have made a case that hey, I'm I'm not doing you know anyone any harm. You know, I'm just trying to you know talk with the people around me. She could have made that case, but the tone again, the tone in the body language that she was com- saying it with was one of um, rudeness mm-hmm. and defiance and talking down and I, I just don't think that's a good look for Christians. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And uh, like I said, it could have gone so much better mm-hmm. <laughs> in so many different ways. Mm-hmm. And it also begs the question, if she really thought that God was telling her to stand up and sing that song, 
Um, she, she shouldn't have listened to the flight leader anyway, right? Yeah, she but, keep going. But she well, I guess she did. She did keep going. She did keep going <laughs> until he said, uh, "Basically, we're gonna we're gonna land and kick you off." And then no, she I, even after he left, she could start singing. Oh, that's right. Yeah. She did, yeah. didn't she? Which is a good point. <coughs> Interesting. She's following her convictions. <laughs> Great. It reminds me of when I deal with Lottie, and I'm like, "Hey, Lottie, don't do this," and she'll find just the edge. And like she'll look at me while she does it, and she's like, "Like I realize you said not to touch this, but like I'm just near it now. Yeah. Is, that, is that okay? It's not okay? touching it. Not touching it. Anyways, Judah, you got any thoughts? That story right there that reminded me of like the garden where I yeah, wonder right. if they just like I'm not I'm not eating it. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's a garden. All right. Well, you let us know what you think. Uh, would you Would you do that on a plane? Would you start singing? Sing. Oh, hopefully not. <laughs> uh, what would you do if you were on the plane? Would you uh, be like, yeah, you go, girl? Or would you kind of awkwardly just keep looking forward, <laughs> pretending, it, pretending it's not happening? Uh, or would you grab something thinking that, oh, she's about to take over the plane and I need to like throw something at her? <laughs> You remember after 9-11, they, like, recommended that? Mm-hmm. Uh, it's like, hey, if someone gets up and try to take over a plane, just grab whatever you have and throw it at them. I remember someone saying that. There's a lot of bad ideas out <laughs> yeah. there in the world. Right? Yeah. Oh, Anyways, you let us know. What would you have done in the comments? We are glad that you all joined us today for the Think Deeper podcast. We will see you all next week.